object in peacock's tail that looks like an eye is called ocellus. Let's look at some mathematical graphs in here. This is a cardioid. Then it is surrounded by ellipse and ellipse is surrounded by um, limosons and uh, plural of ocellus is ocelli. Okay, so I have these uh, polar equations written up here for you. R equals 1 plus sine theta is a cardioid and then here I have an ellipse written in a little messy manner. Okay, yeah, I'll let you write a smarter equation and here we have a uh, limason and then we got another limason. Okay, and sketching will be fairly easy if we are using a nice package to do that. So let us start our graphing. Remember this is your uh, equation of the cardioid. We go to the compute option, click on it and uh, then we will go down to plot 2D. Okay, and in the plot 2D option we want to select the option for making a polar graph. Okay, and the and click on polar and the graph should show up. Okay, so we see the graph. Now we want to modify it. So click on this lower right corner and uh, we want to make, make the boundaries thick. I uh, didn't see any uh, axes or numbers in the peacock's feather. So we'll say even though they are our guiding lines will say don't show them. So here is our here is our cardioid. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add the other curves that we had seen by bringing their equations in. So what we shall do is this. Click here. Go to uh, items plotted. You want to add items in here. Okay, so let's add our ellipse. Then we would like to add who? Our limason, the inner inner one. So here we can do this to add it in. Then we got 4.2 plus 1.2 sine theta for the outer limacon. And uh, just to click on this uh, command button and we are set to see the whole thing. Uh, so we have these graphs and uh, well you can stretch it in several different ways. This is uh, one way I see these uh, curves coming you know, quite like we saw them in the peacock's feather and we can go ahead and paint it in the manner we had seen it there like uh, say here we can give this the dark blue color and what was it and then here we can put light blue and I think here we had um, this color or we can make a peacock feather of any color we would uh, like I'll leave that fun for you to have okay now let us see how does a peacock show all these ornaments in the feathers so 
So what this show of hearts is going on for not to show trigonometry or to show a golden spiral, the dance is uh, going on to attract peahen and it seems to work. That is, when the peacocks dance, it seems to attract peahen and what has been seen is this, that if a peacock has higher number of oscillae in its feathers, then more peahen are attracted towards it. I don't know if the peahen count, but you know that's what the data shows. Okay, so we will go ahead, leave the peacocks and peahen alone and let them do their own thing and we will do mathematics. Our data comes from this paper by Manning and Hartley in which they develop a numerical measure for these two variables symmetry and ornamentation and then show that the two are correlated. But before we see the calculations, let's just take uh, a survey of symmetry as a measure or as an indication of beauty in various objects like this sculpture or this uh, famous man-made architecture or in this uh, pair of cobra spectacles or in this uh, drawing that I made inspired by NBC logo. So Manning and Hartley in their ca calculations made a vertical line through the middle of the peacock train, ignored the number of oscillae on the line, counted the number on one side of the line, call it M, on the other side, call that number N, and then define the absolute value of the difference as train symmetry. Here is this beautiful peacock that Gotham has made and we can see Bola is standing in the center Example. right here showing us the axis of symmetry and he likes symmetry you can see the bell curve on his shirt and here is Gotham Gotham how many oscillate on your side? Thank you, thank you. And uh, Daya Shankar, how many oscillate on your side? 43. And so what is the tail symmetry? 31. Uh, actually 43 and then you will subtract uh, what was Gotham's? 31. That is the tail symmetry for this peacock is how much? 12. Manning and Hartley, what they did was they recorded this data while doing what I was not able to do, that is taking pictures of 18 peacocks while they were facing the camera. And you can see here that as the number of oscillate increases, the train symmetry appeared to decrease. Now the peacocks were showing us a very good dance, so why don't we go ahead and uh, look at this by using a display, say scatter plot, with number of oscillate as explanatory variable plotted on the x-axis and the train symmetry as the response plotted on the y-axis. So to do that, we'll go to this feature, what Excel calls chart wizard. Click on that. We'll choose a scatter. Go to next. You can see our pl plot is coming up. We'll go ahead and uh, write the relevant things like this is peacocks, uh, uh, excuse me, peacocks tail, okay, and um, here we have number of oscillate, and here we have the train symmetry, okay and uh, we can finish it. We can remove some certain things that we may not necessarily want. Okay, enlarge the picture. All right, here we go and here we go. And our numbers in the x-axis are way out of bounds, so we will click on the x-axis and ask and change the scale not to make the things fit too tight. So let's start at 100. 
and here we go. We see a negative association a lot more clearly than going through numbers. Now, in order to see a mathematical relationship between the two variables, that is an equation that will help us guide through the pattern. Let's click on this and you can see this chart option coming up on the top on the toolbar. If you don't have this picture clicked, that option won't show up. Okay, so click on the picture, then click on the chart option, and we go to add trend line. Okay, now this shows a positive association, but it's going to adjust according to our numbers. And let's have this thing do everything that it would do for us, doesn't cost us anything. So here we go. You can see that uh, we have a line with negative slope that will help us find the predicted value of train symmetry for any given number of oscillate within this range. Okay, and notice this value of r square, which is coefficient of determination. What does that help us understand? You can see that y values change from point to point as x changes. So there is variation in the y values with the variation in the x values, okay? But if we walk along this line, since we know the equation, we understand that variation according to the values of x very well. So what this does is this, that this value of r square that it gives us the proportion of the variation in the y values that, ex that is explained by this line that fits the data the best or which is called the line of best fit, okay? Now, before uh, I close, first of all, notice this, that uh, Pihan seemed to understand this uh, line pretty well. Let's remove this anomalous thing here that is negative five on the y-axis because we define the train symmetry as absolute values and which and they can't be negative. So here we go. Okay. Now we'll leave the other things like uh, a distribution of the length, uh, the the lengths of the tails of peacock and other things in the upcoming attractions. Okay. Now go ahead and work on your other regression exercises. And if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Thanks.